Well, here we are back with the project that we created. And, you know, ignore these recent things down here. We have manual part one to open. So I'm going to save this as, just change the two to a three, just so we have a sequence. Okay, so I just renamed the project to fit what we're doing with the videos, not what you're doing in the lab project manual. So in the lab project manual, this would actually be around page 70. From here on out, if you don't have the manual, you're going to find it difficult to follow some of these discussions. So you're welcome to watch them and listen anyway to get out of it what you can get. But I'm not going to make them longer trying to explain things that are in the manual because there, there was material between page 1 and page 70 that I didn't talk about. I talk about it in some of the other videos that are part of the playlist for CCW part one. So you can also watch these. I mean, if you're serious about learning or acquiring this skill, then you have to get after it. It's not going to be a casual undertaking. You have to work hard on it. So explore your first project for the micro 800. We already did some of this that is roughly on page 70. But primarily what I'm going to do is download this project and then explore it online. So to download, of course, you have to be connected. You see I have a path up there and I am connected. So I'm going to download it. There's th two down arrows here, build and download. It will always build before you download, but you can build it to see if there are any obvious errors, because if you build it, and there's errors, so you got to correct those before you download anyway. So let's just download. It's going to build and you'll probably see something down at the bottom in the output panel here. There, build. One succeeded, zero failed, zero up to date, zero skipped. But it's not downloaded yet. So I don't really have any project values. No, you know what? I'm going to pick that because they should all be zero. So I'm going to download with project values. This, this is something you have to pay attention to when you're working out in the field, because you remember, you open up a project on your computer. It moves it from downloads complete, change the control to remote to execute controller project. Yes. So you opened it on the computer and now it's in RAM. It's on your hard drive or your solid state hard drive, but it's on your hard drive. It's in RAM, and when you download it, that creates a third location. And if you open the project, then edit it, and then download it into the controller, and then go offline and edit it offline, now all three copies, neither of them match the other. Because what you, you haven't saved it to your hard drive, but you edited it in RAM, and then you downloaded it, and you can make changes on the in the controller. And then if you go offline, you left what the controller had to go back to what it was after you changed it from the hard drive. So now the, the three copies, they don't match each other. You got to pay attention to what you're doing. Get it firmly in your brain. So download with project value succeeded. So now you see it's up here, it says connected. Click to disconnect. So you kind of have to adjust to the verbs here click to disconnect. This doesn't say disconnect. It says connected, but it could have been just the opposite. This could have said disconnect. That way you click here to disconnect. Same thing. Anyway, pay attention to what you're doing. So let's open up the local variables. You see there's nothing there and the global variables and you see there's nothing there, but you see it looks completely different. And you even see some values changing in some of the system variables. These are some of the variables that it provides you, and you can actually access these. Most of these are read-only. Some of them are write. What we are interested in, in particular, are the I.O. See, all of these say I.O., and then they say EM4 embedded. That means they're in the little plastic box with the processor. Some of them say D.O., for digital output. Some of them say DI for digital input. Down here, you've got some that say embedded inputs, and I see one embedded output. We're going to stay away from the analog right now. 
And notice that up here, I have logical value and physical value. Now, right now, if we go look at the 820, we can see that we're in the run mode. Go back here. Logical value is the value in the logic, but we don't have any. There is no ladder logic. So these logical values should stay at zip. Now, since we're running, I'm going to turn on an input. And notice when I did, I got a check mark. So this isn't a box that you check. Even though it's a box and a check shows in, it's showing you this logical value of digital input zero. And I told you that there is no logic, so no logical values. Well, actually there is because the inputs have the highest influence, the highest priority over the state of those bits. So IO embedded digital input zero here, that is just a bit in memory. That's a bool. See over here at Boolean. And I could actually lock that value. I don't suggest doing that. I'm just telling you it's there. Notice grayed out here, and you can barely see it. This is also checked, showing you that the physical value is the same as the logical value. Now, if I go to Micro 820 and I put it in the program mode and come back here to these variables, notice they still look the same. In 500 land, you know, slick 500s, MicroLogics, the inputs, if, if the thing's powered up, but it's in the program mode, then the state of the bits in memory that represent those inputs, they are not controlled by the actual voltage on the input terminals, unless you go to run. And then the scan takes a snapshot and updates the memory locations. CCW and 5000 are different in that Whatever the inputs are, that's what it is, program mode or otherwise. So turn the output back off, and you notice that the logical mode did not change. When I flipped the input off, I did it when I was in the program mode. I did not mean to do that, but this is a good learning experience. So let's go back here and put this back in the program mode, and then go back to the global variables and I will just click on input zero. But remember, I'm in the program mode. Okay, remember that. We all do, we do all this in the lab manual, the project manual. So watch the logical value when I switch back to the run mode. I have to go here to do it and go back here and look, it's zero. And if I click on it, it the physical value doesn't change. See, we're Right now we are in the run mode. So it is collecting inputs and populating the value in those registers. This is the physical value here. So it's I may be able to turn on the logical value, but I can't turn on the physical value. Now watch. Logical value is on, physical value is off. I'm going to go back and change it to the run mode. Come back to here, and you notice it's off. Now I'm in the run mode. So if I flip the switch on, in the run mode, now it's on. And notice that the physical values also checked. Whether or not you can see that on my screen or not, that see that box is a little darker than one below it and the one above it. It's also got a white check mark in it. So if I flip the input on and off, so right now the input is on, turn it off, turn it on. Now, if I go to the program mode, go back here, notice that it's holding the last state. So I'm in the program mode and it's in the last state. If I flip it off in the program mode, nothing happens. So I'm going to flip it back on. Now I'm going to go back to the run mode. Still shows the same. I'm going to turn it off. This, this takes some looking at. I mean, you have to, this is different than 500 and 5,000. Why they did it different, I don't know. I wish they'd have done them all the same, but they did not. Okay, so we're about approaching the limit of one video. So I'm going to, I, I did an input, okay? And if you look right here at input zero, I can turn it on, one on, two, so that's zero, one, two, three, four. So I've got six inputs turned on. And I did that with the switches. I'll just leave them on. Now I'm gonna go up here to the outputs. And notice that I have, well, for inputs, it goes, zero through 11. 
So that's 12 inputs, 0 through 11, that is 12. Up here I've got 0 through 6, so that's only 7. The eighth one is technically this analog one down here, but just please don't go off full of that right now. Just pay attention to what we're doing up here. So I cannot turn in, in the run mode. I can turn the logical value off. See, it went right back on though. Because when you're in the run mode, the input scan overwrites, it, it writes the state of those screw terminals, the voltage on those screw terminals. It writes it into memory more than a thousand times a second. So, you know, this looks like that's more than thousands of a second. That's because the refresh rate on the screen. And remember that the communications out of the controller over ethernet or with the USB connection, it's a low priority. So that this is not a true reflection. So the, when you're in the run mode, the actual state of the screw terminals determine the logical value and the physical value. Now let's go up here and I'm going to click on the logical value for digital output zero. And notice that also came on. And if I look over there at my digital field device simulator, the light is on. Now the, the IO controls the actual screw terminal voltage into the input module controls these in the run mode, but these, are logical values and there's no logic in there. There's no rungs in there turning these on or off. If I go to the, right now you see logical value on, physical value on. If I go here and put it in the program and go back here, you see nothing's really changed. Okay, except the output went off. In other words, you look here, you think you see a check mark there and you do. However, because we're in the run mode, Oh, I'm sorry, because we're in the program mode, it turned off those outputs even though we told them to be on. So we'll go back here. See, shows physical value on, logical value on. Now look, I unchecked it, but that stayed the same. Okay, so if I go back and check that, and I go to microwave 20 up here, and I go to the run mode, go back here. Now you see these are both off. If I turn on the logical value, it turns on the physical value. The light is on, the output is on. But if I go to the program mode, the light goes out, but the variables still look the same. Now, if I turn this off, see that stayed on. So it remembers the last state of the physical value. But I'm looking over there at my digital field device simulator, that light is off. So this physical value may be checked, but the output is off. If I go back to the run mode and then come back here, see they're both off. So when you're in the run mode, the logical value and physical value and the state of the actual output will match. But when you're in the program mode, not necessarily. Because remember, we had that light turned on, the output turned on, turn it back on here. See these both show check. I see the lights on, but if I go here to the mode and switch it to program and come back here. This looks the same, but I look over at my actual light bulb, the LED that's connected to the output and it's off. So I think that's enough for one session. We're just exploring this. We did the same thing in the manual. There might've been a question in there. Why do you think that it behaved in this? Well, actually check the logical value of input zero. Did the checkbox change state? Yes. Did it remain changed? No. If you, if you did it in the run mode, you might see it change state, but it's not going to stay. Okay. So we're in the run mode. I wish that you could look here and see the run mode, but I don't see it. Okay. We're in the program mode. We'll go back to the run mode and then we'll go back here and I will check that. Oh, that's the output down here. I got those all turned on. So if I turn on input zero, you see the check mark, but it doesn't stay. So that answers the questions there. Then we have you go to the program mode. Can you make a guess at why the run and program choices above and below remote are grayed out? Keep an eye on this as you progress through this manual. You, they're grayed out because you can't change them here. You can change them here. So they allow you to change the logical value. See, now this isn't going to stay. If we're in the run mode, okay, that means we're in the in the 
we're in the run mode. So I can change the logical value, but the physical value does not change with it. Go back here. I know this can be confusing. Go to program, back to here, and turn that back on and see this physical value did not change. Go back to the run mode and it should change because the input's still on. Notice that this does not change. Now, let me put it, turn on that input. With the input on, then the that dominates the screw terminal in that place of memory. Notice that this is now, the physical value is not on, is now on. Go back to micro 820, go to program. You have to look at this over and over again. Now that's the logical value. If I uncheck this, it stays unchecked because it's in the program mode. Well, let's leave it there. You, you might want to watch. You need to play with this on your equipment. Now you might be using the simulator that's free starting in version, I think 13, and you don't actually have a piece of hardware. And the, the simulator is excellent. I definitely recommend it. So we'll stop here and pick it up later in the lab project manual.